All right, thank you. So my name's Warren, and for me, community has always been a really important tool for learning. Uh, being able to have people around to bounce ideas off of, uh, to support you, to inspire you, they make me a happy guy. Uh, it makes it a lot easier to pursue your interests and to learn to do more. Unfortunately, when I was a student, I never really recognized this or tried to take advantage of it. I didn't explore any opportunities within Edmonton that you just heard about uh, to really connect with people who shared my excitement for things that I was really passionate about. I, I always felt like I was too busy being a student, which is really stupid. I never had more free time than when I was a student. Uh, this is Dan Martell. He spoke during Edmonton Startup Week a couple years ago, and he shared some transformative moments in his youth that led him to be the entrepreneur that he is today. And I, I really recognize that as I've transitioned to being a grown-up, which I still have a hard time admitting, uh, I've really learned a lot about these communities that I should have been taking advantage of sooner. Uh, and I specifically learned Edmonton has this really great startup community. Uh, Brad Feld, who wrote this book called Startup Communities, uh, identifies these five different pillars that we believe make up a really strong startup community. Knowing each other as people first, working together, being inclusive, helping recruit, and doing selfish things that drive the community forward. It's important to recognize why community matters. Uh, it creates all these opportunities for collaboration. It's an access point for mentorship, talent development, and retention. It helps you integrate people, students, early on uh, across programs and institutions. And it's a place where you can stress test different ideas. And there's some amazing companies that have grown and are currently growing out of the city. Uh, Jobber, listed here, is one of the incredibly fast-growing companies uh, that truly recognizes the role and the value of community. Uh, for them, investing in community means recruitment opportunities, uh, time for professional development, and interaction with people who maybe are going through similar problems with their companies. DemoCamp is a really good tool that we have for community building, and it's exa an example of the first pillar, uh, getting to know each other. So it's a really good gateway into the startup community. It brings together all types of people, students, developers, entrepreneurs, investors. Anyone can apply to demo, and the rules are really simple. Seven minutes, uh, no slides, no pitching. You can show off anything you want. It could be a new product feature for a company like Jobber. It could be uh, something a student built in 24 hours, like this curling broom here that tells you how fast and hard you're sweeping. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of kind of cool. Uh, we've seen robots, video games, the latest in machine learning technology. It's all about just showing off things that are really interesting and really worth sharing. The second part of Demo Camp is really important. What happens afterwards is everyone goes for drinks. And it's, it's less important, the, the drinks are li less important, you know, still important, but uh, the important part is just getting to know people in a really informal setting as people first. And the running joke is that if you want to ask someone what's your business model, you have to buy them a drink. Uh, so fostering, a part of fostering community is being open to adapt to changing needs. Uh, if you're doing something and it's not getting a lot of traction, get to know your audience, find out how you can tweak it to make it better. Uh, our monthly hack day that we host is a perfect example of this. Uh, we got some feedbacks from some people who were attending our hackathons and they wanted something that was a bit more open. And so that's what we gave them. Now the first Saturday of every month you can come in to start up Edmonton for a day that's just dedicated to building, learning, and tinkering in a collaborative setting. Uh, it's a really good example of that second pillar of working together. There's no pressure to finish building something in a specific period. You can work on your own project, a homework assignment, sit in on a workshop. Uh, we provide lunch. Uh, it's, a really, it's really rewarding to see what people get up to. So we've done some fun things like uh, clarify diff different ingredients for making cocktails. Uh, we built an immersion circulator to take all the effort out of uh, cooking a perfect egg. Uh, it, it's, we even had someone 3D print Settlers of Catan, which Mike would be really excited about. We can't force people to build a company, but we can create all these opportunities for them to access new technologies, to explore ideas, and just build really cool shit. <laughs> Once they're comfortable with the idea of building things and failing and trying again, maybe then they'll start something, and we have resources for that. Uh, this is our elevator in the Mercer warehouse. It's a pain in the ass because if someone leaves a door open on one of the other floors, you can't call it up to you. The tavern tends to hog the elevator. So another example of us working together, we brought a crew of engineers to uh, rig up a system where we can detect when it's open and we can start to mess with them. 
This is Tammy, and she's one of the amazing Edmontonians. Uh, she really embodies the, the third and fourth pillars of community, being inclusive and helping recruit. She hosts a WordPress meetup. She mentors at a meetup called Ladies Learning Code. And she really believes that someone, everyone has something valuable to offer. And she helps us create a really welcoming and comfortable environment. And by doing that, she really makes everyone who comes out to an event an evangelist, where they're going out, they had a great time, they're telling their friends, and they're coming out again. Uh, the fifth pillar is to be selfish sometimes. Uh, when you do something that's for your company that's in the best interest of the community, everybody wins. So that could look like sponsoring a meetup. Uh, and these themes fit into things outside of the tech and startup world. It's really exciting to see the quality of restaurants that we have in Edmonton and bars, and it's really being pushed forward by the passion behind the teams in restaurants like Three Boars, Corso 32, Range Road. One example that really uh, hits home close to my heart is Edmonton's Midnight Cocktail Club. They get together once a month. There's a feature spirit or fortified wine. Everyone makes a drink with that product and tastes everything and votes and the winner gets a prize. So it's this right, really the right mix of camaraderie, competition, and education, and it really helps to drive that community forward. But there's other things going on in the city. Uh, tons of things you can get involved with, like the November project. Even if you're one of those people that's cr crazy enough to go running in the middle of winter, uh, there's a group called River City Runners that gets out and takes advantage of the wonderful river valley that Edmonton has. Uh, if this sounds like your jam, you should go do it. Uh, there's, so there's so much opportunity in Edmonton for you to tap into these things. Take it from someone who really waited too long to take advantage of some of them. Uh, if you're ever interested in learning more about how you can tap in specifically to the startup community, uh, let me know. I'd love to chat. Thanks for listening.